Um, Welcome everybody. Let me see. Can I <laughs> can we set up properly? Okay, this is week week two uh, of the uh, talk shop broadcast with Colton, Olivia, and uh, and yours truly. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to set up the the video properly. Okay, guys, I did better on week one. But anyways. This week we're super excited. We have a couple of uh, of of, uh, of of guests here. We have, of course, you know, um, Olivia and Colton are not guests; they're they're hosts of the show. But um, we have a super 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 mom that we want to introduce to everybody. Uh, some of you, many of you, may have seen her at convention. Uh, you know, running around with her seven tickets. Um, you know, some of you know her uh, at the UBPs and at the events or in HBPs in the Seattle area. But, you know, she is just a phenomenal woman. She, uh, she is somebody that would be the best person to bring into this conversation on today's topic, getting organized. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Koi Seichow. Did I say that right, Koi? Yep, you said it correctly. Uh, okay, great. All right, guys. So today, as y'all know, we're our conversation today is about um, is 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 about uh, what's that? Like it, it's about getting organized. So there's a couple of things that comes to mind with uh, with getting organized. Um, but you know, I would love to pick your brains on it and and let's see what we can learn from one another this week. Okay. I love it. All right. So. We talk about the business, the unfranchised business. There's lots of there's there's lots of things that's going on, especially now we got so much crazy tools. Um, you know, it's like it's like we pay. Sometimes I pinch myself. We pay $129 for this. Like okay. it's, <laughs> it's not, but we got so much stuff, right? Um, I don't know if you guys know, we got Hurdler, um, you know, these, these, these initiatives running on, uh, it's, it's crazy. We got our, so basically we have our own accountant app, uh, our own accounting app. Now we have, um, mm -hmm. you know, the shop.com website and, and sometimes it can get a little bit noisy. Um, so I put together a few talking points that I really like to pick your brains on, on how y'all keep the, uh, that's my, uh, that's my leftover, uh, accent from, from the Texas trip, <laughs> but, but how, how y'all keep the, uh, how y'all keep, keep organized. How do you keep, let's talk about the names list first. How yeah. do you guys keep your names list organized? Do you do it written out or do you do it digital? What do you use? Hoy, go ahead. Okay. So before I kept it electronically on a spreadsheet because that's how I used to organize my, um, how I have my system organized. But then I realized I don't have ac access to my computer all the time. And if I needed to add names on there, it was harder for me. And so I went back to the traditional notebook style. I just got a lot of these composition and I have it for different occasions. And one is specifically nameless. So on this one, it's my international one, but I have one that just says contacts and I keep it with me everywhere I go. And in the beginning, I have, I always start off with 300, 300 names and then um, as I go through the week, I pick out 10 that I focus on heavily with in that week, and I just work with them until they become a customer or until they become a business partner. And I just work through that out of that 300 names, and then I keep adding on new names, new names. If I don't have my notebook with me, I have my phone, and I always put in prospect as their last name. So as soon as I get home, I would transfer those names onto my notebook. I love it. Okay, yeah. Hey, who agrees with that? Like, um, I, I was in that situation too, where I've made, I think I must have like 60 different spreadsheets of my names list, yep. keep losing them. And, you know, it, all, it always ends up back in the notebook. Yep. Absolutely. Weird, huh? It's, uh, I think it's a mental, uh, what's that called, muscle memory, right? Mm. It's the fact that you're writing things down uh, obviously pen or pencil, but obviously we do all pens. Um, and I, similar to what Koi does, I think, you know, when we're going out and about, I, you know, let's uh, collecting the names, exchanging phone numbers or social media. Uh, but I always ask for the phone number in addition to 
um, just social media. Social media is too hard to keep track, right? So, um, Even then, for you. Yeah. yeah. So I write yeah. maybe M A as Mark in America as the last name, rather than prospect, and then transfer it right away onto um, the names list book. But I also just uh, every year when we do the New Year resolution on like the calendar, I also mm -hmm. redo the names list on my calendar so that when I'm, you know, same thing as the weekly names list that I absolutely love. I also redo a weekly names list, like, you know, seven to 10 people that are red and hot in conversation, people that are, you know, you are you on the short term follow up? Are you putting them back onto the long term follow up list? So right. I think um, the, the weekly has been just much easier to focus on rather than just having like, you know, a few hundreds. So I totally agree with that, Koi. So, yeah. so when you say you put it in the calendar, like where do you put it, Olivia? Like what do you mean? Um, so on my calendar, I you know there's all obviously the notes section. So I just got back home, so uh, my stuff is still in the car. So <laughs> or else uh, I put them in the back of the calendar book where I have you know the 60 to 100, or you know uh, if I have 150 to start with, then throughout the year I keep adding what I have for the year. So I also can measure monitor each year in terms of how my prospecting um, has been yeah. going. You know, like, did I do more this year? Or was I more consistent this year? Um, I also do write down um, uh, blanks for uh, on my daily calendar. So yeah. I write down the blanks of people that I talk to, you know, how the three talk to, one appointment, two mm -hmm. names. So I write their names mm -hmm. on the day so that I don't end up calling the same people the day after. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to yeah. keep that rhythm of 24 to 40 hours so that I can track, oh, did I call them on Tuesday or was it just yesterday? So right. I think that's been helping me to just having a more consistent follow-up as well. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Um, but probably you, you got a similar thing where every, you know, every time you want to revamp, that's the first thing you go to is, is your names list, you get it ready to go and mm -hmm. uh, knowing. So you, you or when you say calendar, are you talking like a physical calendar that you use? Yeah, or is physical it physical calendar, always physical. Yeah. Always physical. Oh. Always physical. It's mm -hmm. so funny. You know, you think I'm, for a millennial I'm calendar, I'm, for calendar, I'm digital. Um, yeah. Really? I'm, it's a physical one. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, just over, last year, I just switched over to a, a, a Google calendar with full Google mode, mostly just because it synced up with Michaela's and we were kind of like button heads on stuff and always running different right. directions. And then also How's that working for you? It's been great because we also, you know, we live like five minutes down the road from our parents and we're all, our lives are kind of intertwined. And so it's good. We all put our calendars together so we can kind of sync up. And I know, you know, when this haircut appointment's happening or whatever, so we can all kind of like overlap a little bit. So digital helped from that standpoint. But most of my life I've been, when I say most of my life, I'm 25, but over the last, you know, five, six years. <laughs> I've been about to Go on, Colton. Showing <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Franklin Covey planner thing that I've used for most of my life. But as far as the names list goes, it's so funny. Koi pulled out the black composition notebook. This is literally, I every time I use it, this is exactly what I use. I add my names to that list, and that's that's how we keep it all organized. Right. Okay. Yeah. So so that, I think we see eye to eye on that. This is interesting. So I, yeah. we tried, uh, you know, we've tried digital for names lists. Doesn't mm -hmm. work. Still go back to the... Um, Still go back to 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 written. I got a I, I like a I, I have a really nice um, notebook right now. Compliments of uh, uh, yeah of uh, the, the the team Kansas City. Look, I love looking through my names just now because I love how it smells like leather. But <laughs> so, names, <laughs> so names list we like writing it down and we all agree on that. Yeah. Yes, but yes. calendar was sort of 50 50 um uh mm -hmm. you know Cole and i like it digital and uh and and the girls like it uh uh written as well koi did you say how how, how you like your calendar was it written i or? use the digital one as well use digital as well oh, right, man. right. Oh. <laughs> but, only, but only one of us here is director so yeah, uh, i know <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting but you know I, I guess yeah. it's you know whatever um whatever 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 uh you know works best for 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 adding anyone right for all of our listeners here mm -hmm. um so colton uh and and coy would you uh, for calendar apps like would you suggest google calendar or is there something else that you're using 
Uh, I'm, I'm a Google guy 100% through and through. All my stuff's Google. I'm yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, the same. And uh, no, I started off with Google Calendar, and then I realized it was kind of too technical, and so uh -huh. I just went back to just the regular calendar on my phone. Oh, and yeah. like Olivia, how she, she puts in what who to follow up on her actual hard copy calendar. I write right. it in the calendar here, like who I talk to in what day. And then if I say I'm going to follow up with them in four days, I go four days ahead and I put their name there and say, make sure to call this person on this day, this time. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. That's I, good. I use Siri a lot for that. So that's, that's the benefit. Like Siri really like helps me on that. I'll be like, hey, you know. Remind me to text Olivia on how she uses her calendar in three days. Siri is a little bit more advanced, I think, in, um, than, than the uh, uh, than, than hey than hey Google or, or than, than Android. Yeah. Um, I think, like from from that point of view, but um, but I'm, I'm an Android this user. This is a personal sure. opinion, but I do think it takes an iPhone to make it to higher pin levels for sure. <laughs> All right, this is Shark. Hi, oh, Shark. Hi. Hi, Shark. Oh, my gosh. He's like a furball. Sharky because he eats people. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's coughing. Okay, let's talk to-do list then. Like, what, do you guys got any hacks for to-do list or any, any habits that you notice? Uh, I, I I noticed uh, for me I, I love um, I love building up momentum in my to-do list so I have a lot of cheat ones and the other day somebody made a post on Facebook which was like it, which was like it just explained my life it's do something and then uh, do something that you think is really productive or really effective mm -hmm. and then go on your to-do list write it in and then cross it off you guys ever do that yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay, so it's not just me. No. Right. <laughs> my, my dad always says that action creates momentum. So definitely a big fan of, of those check boxes and just making it happen, making it happen, mm -hmm. making it happen boxes. Mm -hmm. and it produces more momentum, especially when I'm, right. I'm like in a slump or like I'm not really feeling like doing anything. Um, right. I'll just be simple like, you know, unload the dishwasher. I'll put that on my to-do list. I'll be like, check. <laughs> I'm killing it today. <laughs> yeah. oh. um, I like to put, um, you know, similar tasks uh, in batches, right? So uh, I mm -hmm. guess it's almost like a habit that I was, my mom was able to train me to obviously start, uh, I think since I was like five or seven, uh, I started to write down a time schedule because I had to practice piano like five to eight hours a day. So if I don't finish practicing piano, I don't get to go play mm -hmm. or watch TV, do whatever. So then I've always had a habit of, for example, uh, eight to nine. This is the task here. Uh, Twenty uh, half an hour from ten to fifteen, uh, ten to thirty. You know, this is what I need to get done. So, um, for example, like obviously call workshops. You do them in batches, right? And maybe like even studying things. Um, so like like you said, like doing something that kind of makes you feel like oh, I learned something or super productive. And uh, so for example, I would be like, if I feel a little sluggish today with action, I would probably like okay, half an hour of uh, studying uh, uh, one audio from the convention that will stimulate mm -hmm. the results I want to create, right? So then, mm -hmm. so maybe starting from something that you like to do uh, rather than you just go straight into something that you think is challenging. Um, so that kind of like picks up your desire to do more. But in the right. meantime, I also like to get the toughest, toughest tasks done before noon. Right. So then the you feel your day is super productive. That's really right. Good. Oh, I love that. Get the toughest <laughs> task done before noon. That's a new rule that I'm going to start implementing mm -hmm. for week. how that turns out. Yeah, check in with us next week. I'll let you know how my week yeah. went. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that, that's really good. I, you know, I think we're, um, you know, I, I do the, 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 the other, the other, I, 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 I do it so that um, I'm, I'm going to do add as you go kind of guy. When I start feeling sluggish, I'll pull out. This is kind of a waste of time. I don't know why, but I, I do this. I pull out my phone. I put in there, drink, shopping, and nudie coffee. And I go up and drink the coffee. And uh, it, it just, it feels good, you know, when there's more stuff checked off. 
um, on the to-do list. Koi, how do you, how, what's your calendar look like? Because you're a, you're a mom, you're also a uh, school counselor, um, mm -hmm. you're also a kickboxer, and mm -hmm. franchise owner, and you're the UBP coordinator out in Seattle? No, I yeah. was two years ago. Two years ago? So yeah. I, I help with a local right now, yeah. Oh, she's the local right now, okay. Yeah. Well, All right. I kind of yeah. work alongside Jamie yeah, with for the local coordinating. Right, right. So, oh my gosh. How do you do it? How do you balance all these things um, and uh, and not go crazy? <laughs> okay. So Monday through Friday between 7 a.m. and 2.30 is a chunk that's already blocked off in my calendar for work, which is non-negotiable. And then mm -hmm. any time before 7 a.m. and after 2.30 is when I plug in every everything that's business related, family, my gym and activities, everything that I want to, you know, um, to carry out every day and, and on the weekend. So mm -hmm. three days a week, I go to my kickboxing gym and mm -hmm. the other two days is dedicated to one Thursday, Thursday night is for UBP, UBP or HBP, whatever comes first during that, um, that week. And then Tuesday is when I do all my call workshop because is the beginning of the week. I do my right. call workshop, my appointments, I set them all up. And then in between my kickboxing, I have like some, some days, Monday through Friday, I have an hour in between. So mm -hmm. while I'm taking a break, I'm going through following up with customer, with uh, my prospects, you know, getting appointments, reschedule or whatnot. And then on weekends, so Saturday morning, so I also run. So on yeah. Saturday morning, I run with my daughter from nine mm -hmm. to 10. And then I set all my appointments between 10 30 and like 4 p.m and then yeah. after 4 p.m it's family time so it's we call it kaylee's time so from 4 p.m till bedtime is really her time and then sunday i have church in the morning from nine to one and then i set more appointments from one until um that i can go as far as 9 p.m wow. and so that's wow. really my week are you doing this all from here yes that is really <laughs> good wow <laughs> Because I, I have it structured, that's exactly how I have it every week. And if like weddings come up, birthdays come up, whatever it is, if it falls in um, the day that I have a business or an appointment, I skip all of those. So I've, I've missed my best friend's wedding, I've missed anniversaries, birthdays, whatnot. Because to me, you know, if I, it's it's not an excuse for me, it's a reason and it's a temporary sacrifice you know, for that I'm willing to to um, give up. Mm. Right, right. What are some non-negotiable, you know, events that um, that it's that, that you you plug your team in or you you yourself like mm -hmm. make sure that you you're there every time. Right. So for my entire team, um, everyone who is a go now, it's uh, non-negotiable to plug in all the major events. So from international convention, world conference, Chinese boot camp, those are all non-negotiable. And then we also plug in the local seminar, the UBP, and then the HBPs is whatever day works for them. So we have it in multiple locations, always on Thursday night. So we have it in multiple locations. We may have two or three HBPs going on the, on the same Thursday, but it's in different locations, whether it is Seattle, Renton, Kent, Uwalla, wherever it is. Yeah, um, yeah those those are the non-negotiable. That's great. Oh. Huh. There you go. Oh gosh, okay. All right. A major event, uh, that's the most important thing, no doubt. Yes. Mm. Yeah. The, um, I think we, let me see, hold on a sec. I got to pull up something right now because now that we're talking about events. There's something that I wanted to bring up that maybe not a lot of people uh, know, know about. It's the product symposium. Not sure if you guys know that we're doing a, a dual language this year uh, for the first time. Um, do you guys hear about that, Olivia? No. No? All yes, right, well, West Coast. Yeah, uh, oh, yes, it's, yes. it's on the West Coast this year. Yeah, but um, in on the East Coast, October 4th uh, to the 6th, we have it, you know, a, a, at Springfield, Mass. And great, um, you know, it'd be great, great to check out. Uh, also on the West Coast, it's going to be in uh, Chinese with English translations. I think it's just the first time. Look at that lineup. 
It's yeah. crazy. Did Dennis learn Mandarin for this? <laughs> Did Dennis learn Mandarin for this? Hey, Dennis. <laughs> you know, I'm learning all. Oh I'm learning God. all about it. You know, I heard this is the place to be. You know, the talk shop is what's happening around the world. You know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I couldn't help but get right on here when you were talking about the product symposium. It's sort of like radar. You know? oh. Hey, <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I think it's great what you're doing. And Koi, I think you're absolutely fabulous. Scheduling is what it's all about. That's the only way you can make it happen. So many mm -hmm. people don't plan to be successful. It's not that they don't want to. But I'm going to just take a second here, if you don't mind. I'm very excited about the upcoming product symposium. Uh, the, the East Coast is October 4th, 5th, and 6th. It'll be in English with Chinese translations. And then the 11th, 12th, 13th in Anaheim, California. And yes, in the night, I am going to Disneyland because I am a freak. I like to go on all the rides. Uh, and I will have my granddaughter, Izzy, come down. Uh, just an excuse, you know. But uh, bottom line is we'll have a great, great symposium. Here's what we're doing. The theme is maximize your timeline in health. However, what we know is all of us have to work within five generations. We market within five generations. I don't know if you're aware of the Z generation. Those are basically up to 23 years old. You got your millennials from 24 to 34. You got your Xers from uh, 35 to 55. You got your boomers, you know, 55 to 75 and you got your seniors at 75. I got to tell you, this is perfect because we're going to show you exactly how to market to each of the markets based on what these people are thinking about in that generation, what's important. So it's going to really focus on conversational marketing and how you can enter act with people constructively to make it happen so i'm fired up and you know what my mandarin's coming along you know so i've got something happening here but i just wanted to thank you guys thank you for giving me a spot here i'm a fan of the product symposium this is our 23rd year uh, of getting out there and giving the details on why our products work so well and we're putting it together in such a great way this year. So I hope you'll join us and uh, wish you well. Love Wonderful. Thank Looking you, forward to it, Dennis. You know, uh, you know what I love about Dennis? Um, uh, Dennis is a video share. He's, he's sitting in front of a picture of a lion. Oh, wait, no. That's Dennis Franks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, yeah, okay. <laughs> that kid's a Team Flushing. I just want you to know, Team Flushing awarded me that when I was up there. And it's wow. very dear to me, you know, so it was a beautiful time getting up there to work with Amber and Min Lu and Olivia and the entire team. It was awesome. Oh, oh, we can't wait for you to come back, Dennis. Mm -hmm. All right. Looking forward to it. Okay. I'm going to sign off. Continue on. I'm listening. Okay. So have a good one. Okay. Great. Thank you, Dennis. Awesome. All right. Also, I wanted to uh, just take a moment for all our listeners here uh, just to talk a little bit about inventory management. Now, uh, we just an update. We had, you know, we had it turned on, and then um, you know, we had it turned off, like as uh, with the beta testing and all that. So now December second, that's the new date where it's gonna be a full rollout. Uh, so uh, this gives us some time to communicate with our groups. I recommend what we do from here, uh, Colton and Olivia. I don't know if you guys agree or not, but I'd recommend from now on any order that comes in. We, you know, just keep track of those ones and then keep track of the ones we sell. And that way, um, if, if you guys are like me, I have a, I have a cupboard, a, a little cupboard with some inventory in it. And sometimes I just don't really want it to count all of the stuff, right? It's not a lot, it's just that some of the stuff is, uh, you know, a purple bottles, OPC or enzymes and all of that. So. Um, you know, let's keep track of the new inventory coming in so that when the inventory management tool goes live on December 2nd, we can just yeah, you know, use our existing list um, as, a, as a fallback. Uh, I think that's something we can get everybody to do. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get, get in the habit of it. A lot of people, you know, they try to build the ark while it's raining outside. You might as well build the ark before it starts raining if you know it's going right. on. Right. <laughs> So we've got some extra time now. Um, but anyways, wanted to touch upon these, these couple of things, what you guys think about. 
Uh, writing things down, yes or no? Overrated or underrated? Underrated. 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 Right? Yeah, I completely agree. Decluttering. Um, what do you guys think of decluttering? How often should you do it or should you do it at all? Every time. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely a fan, but while I say that, like I'm looking at my, you know, my desk has got stuff on it and all that, but I'd say I'm relatively organized. Anytime I need to like, anytime I feel stressed out, that's the yeah. very first thing I do is like, I declutter my, my room and I declutter my office and I'm like, okay, good to go. I'm um, not to right. use the procrastination tool, but definitely, um, you know, it's a good way to kind of get your legs under you and get, get momentum and check boxes again. Right. right. Yeah. I, I never knew how good decluttering felt until I had to move and we got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> Hey, this is great. I'm more productive. Things are out of the way. And you get to find quite valuable treasures. Like when you, you know, things that like you, you come across an old notebook. I found a note, notebook that Dennis had signed when I was an executive coordinator. Um, wow. and yeah, it was, you know, it was wonderful. I, I kept all this stuff. You also, you know, here are some of the things that some people have showed me what they found when they were decluttering. Um, you know, a picture uh, came across. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's oh that? God. Okay, so you guys know Catherine Von Shu Yang, right? <laughs> you know who that guy is? That guy right there in the middle? Oh my is that Colton? You haven't changed a <laughs> bit. <laughs> I'm just right there, Colton and Avery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. What this says, this says, guys, is um, you know, one day, one day, our kids are gonna take pictures like this with, uh, with, with these, with, with, with us, you know. Um, wow. Yeah. We're we're really building. Uh, I, we're, we go through so much of the same stuff in different areas, but we're we're really building such a strong bond and camaraderie and you know, family. I think uh, you know, this is. This is Uncle Shu and 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 Aunt Catherine. <laughs> oh, what's going on with this picture? It, well, it becomes family, you know, because that really is my Uncle Shu and Aunt Catherine. And uh, you know, honestly, like really, when it boiled, like like Tom Holden, I really thought he was an uncle of mine. Uh, it was I was in seventh grade by the time I found out he wasn't actually an uncle. Uh, my dad <laughs> knew a lot of brothers and siblings, and I just thought he was one of them, and, and uh, never thought anything of it. I was like Uncle T, Uncle T, Uncle T, and then uh, and then I was in seventh grade, and and I, like was like absolutely smashed and like my world fell apart. I'm like, you're not actually my uncle. What is going on? I've been lying to you. Uh, <laughs> these become your family. These are the people you vacation with. These are the people you do life with. These are the people you're in the trenches with. These are, um, you know, the family that you choose. And you know, I, I look at this picture and that's really, that's really what I see. I mean, this is a, this is, this is not something you do and get money out of the way. And then like, you know, go do other like yeah. do other stuff. But at the same time, you're surrounded by, people and family that you love and that you, you know, create another community with. Right. Where, where was this picture taken? Do you remember? That um, shirt you're wearing. I don't remember. It looks like at a restaurant or something like that. We were doing, um, uh, I think, a district or a regional down there in Dallas at that point. So. Yeah. Your shirt says something about the grind. Um, yeah, you're grinding it out. Like, uh, Makes sense. You're really grind early. Six years old. <laughs> okay. All right. Yo, back on, yeah. Oh, okay, you said so, yes, absolutely. I mean, I totally agree with you. It's I didn't understand how good it feels uh, until moving, right? But you know, I think I uh, also found so much, um, you know, productivity by doing decluttering, decluttering our mind almost on like right. a daily basis. Um, just getting rid of the junk, getting rid of the garbage, getting rid of the negativity, getting rid of the doubts, right? So um, just, you know, like no more burdens. Um, you know, we do our very best to help anyone achieve their dreams. But so many people put other people's, uh, you know, their own doubts or their themselves giving up onto their own shoulder. So, you know, mm. that's why we need to declutter and measure, monitor, learn from the experiences. But you can't let the, the failure get to your heart or your that's mind. Right? So just don't yeah. forget to declutter mentally. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is, you know, that, that's so true. And, and not, we, we don't talk about this enough. Like, uh, you know, people that have, that we feel we've let down, um, but they've really given up on, on, on their own and, and it haunts you. I'm not going to lie. Like some of it's still haunting me. Um, some of them you knew they could, could have, 
you know, make great things happen and is can't help but so how do you how do you declutter or let's talk about this a little bit like how do you declutter your mind do you guys meditate um you know or or do you hang out with partners what how do you declutter that i'm a fake meditator so i try meditating and then i fall asleep <laughs> and don't, the next don't, you're don't gonna, happen to you snores at uh shavasana in yoga class right <laughs> <laughs> We don't make it to the yoga class. <laughs> well, uh, I definitely begin every morning and every night with quiet time. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I get my world really quiet. Um, I do like a meditation thing. I read from Proverbs and um, As a Man Thinketh is a daily, you know, morning read for me. Um, mm -hmm. that I, right. or I just started actually, I'm, I was going to ask you guys about journaling, if you guys are journalers. I've always tried to be a journaler. Ideal Colton always thinks he's a journaler, but then uh like i like look through old journals and it was like three pages of journaling and then like nothing for the rest of the book and then like three i'll buy a really cool journal and you know so um but i did find an app recently i've been using consistently for probably two months called the five minute journal um right which, you know, just in of the name is pretty helpful but it kind of helps you get your mind on gratitude and what you're thankful for and and kind of the big goals for the day and and it helps you like look back at the day and it's 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 been really helpful for me for sure um, mm. right 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 that's that's good yeah uh hey do you mind putting a link to that um on the we're gonna put this up on youtube right and so check which is if shameless plug definitely subscribe to the talk shop youtube channel uh if you're watching it on here <laughs> right down below make sure you get all the videos <laughs> the button down below over here in the bottom That's right, right. <laughs> Uh, it, oh, we're so after at this down below thing. <laughs> yeah, look at this. We're a whole bunch of noobs <laughs> trying to get a uh, trying to get a talk show going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay. The last one. Kill procrastination. Procrastination, it, you know, it affects the best of us too. So, um, you know, how how do you guys kill procrastination? I love that tip you got that uh, you gave us, Olivia, about getting the hardest things done before noon. Mm -hmm. um, that's beautiful. I love that. Uh, what are tips you got like to kill procrastination? You get out of the zone. You guys well, do anything? Uh, um, how many? How many of you actually implemented the five, four, three, two, one? Go. Talk to Lauren. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Something that's like, oh, I got, you know, I got like a phone call that I don't want to make or that kind of stuff. Five, four, three, two, one really helped. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's a good one. Five, four, three, two, one. Um, what uh you know what else uh I, what do you guys think of killing procrastination with a little yes. bit of procrastination with a little, uh, bit, of like... with a little bit of procrastination let, let me explain okay i remember doing this earlier on right i was like probably executive coordinator i like getting wins you know getting wins in a row so about to go you know about to book an appointment or about to pick up the phone and make a call but I want to make sure that I'm, I'm I'm in the best mindset to 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 make the call. And if I'm sitting there on the couch, you know, playing playing solitaire or whatever, I'm not in the best mindset. But if I play until I win one round, then I'll get off the couch and I'll make the call. What do you guys think of that? Like I'm gonna play solitaire. I'm gonna make sure I win this round. Get you know get you know get get a high score or something. I uh, know don't have to go for the high score. You'll be playing forever. But I, I, I remember, I remember, I, I had to win that round before I picked up the phone to call. Do you guys ever do that, or is it just me? I think it's just you. Just me. <laughs> Great. All right. <laughs> oh, you're. I mean, weird that I like, I, you know, that's a good way for me to create a win, a quick win, a Ruby's cube before I do something. Wow. Like that. Yeah. yeah. I actually do the other way around, Andrew. I think. Hmm. Now that I think about it, uh, I'm more like if I get these things done, for example, if I booked, uh, for example, my goal is three appointments and I mm -hmm. got those done regardless if I have to call 10, 20 people, then yeah. I get to do a little bit of reward for myself, whether it's, uh, yeah. you know, whatever mm -hmm. you wanted to do that day. So I think I, I do that, but it's more like the other way. Then you get to play. Um, what does an Olivia award look like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does an Olivia reward look like? A glass of wine would do. Oh, <laughs> nice glass, huh? <laughs> okay, sounds good. Here, you know what? This would be a great place to give our task of the week. 
I think a, a great task, you know, uh, Colton, we gave out, you gave out a really good task last week. I was talking to partners about it too after, and you know, even when I was doing a local in Dallas, they were talking about doing the four, uh, the four W's and drawing the circle and getting the gold. Great job with that. Um, I would like to propose the task for this week is after you've killed the week, get a productive week, block off some white space in your calendar, either one evening or one afternoon, where you do whatever you want to do. Yeah. I love it. That's so yeah. good. Yeah. Block off some white space. It could be two hours. It could be an evening. Just, you know, block off some white space at the end of the week after you killed it. Right. To do whatever you want to do. And let's see, you know, how, how, how hard we'll work next week. Huge fan. All okay. right. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Great. Quick, quick spin around. I want to talk real quick about our product of the week this week. Uh, Thymol. Um, amazing product. Uh, what's that? I, I, I think there's so much stuff on it. And then if you watch the video, um, you know, there's so much stuff you can learn from it. I'm trying to keep it simple on how to explain it. So I've broke it down to these three things. I don't know what you guys think. I think you know, thym when I'm thinking thymol, I'm thinking you know, thymoquin, this is the first yeah. ingredient, trademark ingredient, cold pressed black cumin seed oil, uh, and it's an anti-inflammatory uh, um, ingredient. Uh, well, do you guys know, so I found out what cold pressed black cumin seed oil does. Like having it cold pressed creates a consistent, um, you know, uh, percentage like uh, that, 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 uh, that, that gets extracted. Mm. And when there's a consistent extraction, um, the results that people get are consistent. I didn't know that. I thought it was pretty cool. Really you know. cool. Mm-hmm. Um, pycnogenol, you guys, either of you know, I don't know what pycnogenol does. I just know it's good for you. What do you guys know about pycnogenol? Wow. Um, Anti-inflammatory, um, uh, but also mostly uh, antihistamine, right? Oh. I was able to get rid of my allergy uh, no. because of pycnogenol. Right. Um, yeah, huge for skin health too. Hmm. Okay. Great. So for anti-inflammatory for thymoquine, we're thinking you know get rid of you know pain and that type of stuff. And and then for pycnogenol, we're thinking anti-allergies and the stuff that you can't see. Okay. Great. And then we're combining it with the cap and cap technology. Yeah. Uh, first in the world, uh, this multi-phase release, and it creates a synergy which makes thymoquin and pycnogenol tenfold like uh it's not tenfold but that's how i imagine it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. wonder, uh, wonder woman uh, superman right yeah that's what stuck with me i was like wonder woman superman combine the two that's what we have here right. so that was, i get people that are like what like but but we already have you know the antioxidant anti-inflammatory and i'm like yeah you got superman but you also want wonder woman you want the full justice league like, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you right. guys Better. Right. Um, okay. So, quick question: uh, Do you guys like? Have you guys tried it? Do you guys feel any of the effects? Oh yeah. I'll yeah? start. With this. Um, yeah. I yeah. first time I tried was uh, basically right after we got back. We placed the order uh, while in convention. So I, well, my family obviously we've been very consistent with cardiovascular health products just because mm -hmm. it runs in our family, and uh, I've done the gene snip. So actually seven, eight out of the 11 SNPs, I believe for cardiovascular health, uh, we have mm -hmm. mutated. So my mom, uh, I also need to really watch out for any cardiovascular related um, health challenges as well. So um, when I take the thymol, literally, I obviously the day after we came back, we were so tired after like 12 hour bus ride. And then we did our boot camp like a meeting after meeting training. So I was just like really tired but um, I, I feel energy from the heart, like the, the mm. ATP, like the energy from uh, Q10. But right. when I took thymol, I just felt that energy literally was like not like six times, really like one plus one to six. I felt the energy from inside out, just like really sustainable energy, not just like the caffeine. Um, I'm, I'm excited, you know, but it's sustainable energy from the heart. So. Right. It really works for cardiovascular. I, I heard Max Chen told me the same thing. He said he drove, you know, down to New York from Toronto and drove back up, and he wasn't tired when he usually would be. Um, 
Yeah, I've gotten a different response like from Thymanol. Uh I don't know if I feel the energy or not, but I see a lot more clarity in my head. I don't, yeah, I wake up with clarity. Uh, it's crazy because there's lots of stuff going on. And um, I've, I felt that was something that really helped me uh, a lot with. Uh, Colton, you're probably too young to feel anything. Do you feel anything from this? I, I felt a little bit, but um, I really noticed I had a headache one day. And yeah. I took one of the thyme and all and it helped my headache for sure. Uh, Cause I'm trying to avoid like ibuprofen and um, right. or, like, heart stuff. I'm trying to go more natural. I actually do get headaches fairly ish often. Um, and I'm taking many, I'm taking a lot of stuff, but um, I've gotten more chiropractic adjustments more recently and um, right. I'm on more that route as well. But, but I definitely noticed the difference when I took some thyme and all. Um, Great. Hey, and you know why? Because thymoquine uh, crosses the blood brain barrier. So maybe I, I bet you. I actually didn't know why. I was, I was excited you could tell me. <laughs> yeah, I, just, <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, this is, I know it helps with, uh, with you know, all the inflammation and issues. Yeah. Like well, I just wanted to, I thought it'd be quite fun, like if we went over like one or two reviews together. Um, but also a quick announcement to everybody. It is now out of stock. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Really? Or just, wow, wow, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, it's out of stuff, but not to worry. September 20th, it is uh, coming back in. But for now, it's, uh, you know, we, we still got, I think we still got a little bit of cannabiquin um, in stock. But let's look at some of the reviews here for, uh, I love going on reviews to just to show show my customers. I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Look at this one. This is great. My head feeling better. I'm more focused and I see the world in a different way uh mentally and, and physical i think physically awesome for my workout thanks market america i love it great no what a great one. let me see what else we've got Do you guys read reviews as well like the like products it. yeah yes yeah okay what else is here um i i i recommend this to to everybody like when when you're looking at when you have a certain product you want to recommend to your customers um, one of my top retailers in, in our team, she doesn't explain the products to them. She sends them the link and it says, go at the bottom, read the reviews. I love it. That's such a good way yeah. to do that. That's Crazy, right? right? Yeah. yeah. And it's this uh, amazing product. I love the time release, cap and cap technology, greater <laughs> mental clarity. It's crazy. So we're, you know, Colton, you and I are not the only ones that are experiencing it. It's a great product. Yeah. Uh, can't wait to come back in stock. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's let's say we wrap this up, huh? Perfect. Okay, cool. We we got a couple of lightning questions, just two. But if anyone has any questions in the future, moving forward, uh, just go to bit.ly forward slash ask talk shop. Uh, we'll you know we'll see which week is suitable we'll, 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 that that matches our theme, and we'll get to your question. Uh, the first question, I think this question was for Olivia. Uh, to prospects who are business owners or thinking of starting their own business, how do you show them that shop.com can fit into their lives? This is from Anonymous. All right. So, well, first of all, I think um, we have to find, identify the right theme to provide to the right need, right? So, you know, first of all, we do want to communicate with all prospects regarding re regardless of their background. Um, while we provide a shopping annuity business, uh, not to take away or replace what you have it already. And, uh, you know, if you are passionate about your own business and we are here to help you to run your business in a more efficient way and or maybe at more peace, peace of mind, right? So, you know, we are here to complement, to enhance, to help rather than to replace. And mm -hmm. coming from that perspective, um, if you own a business, you definitely have a lot of expenses. So obviously creating another source of income by you know investing back into your shop.com business no brainer and from there on would you like to you know be more connected to um you know local businesses other business uh users you can even you wouldn't be able to uh, make money from the next door uh business owner originally yeah. but because of the shopping you the aspects would you like to get paid on your next door used to be competitor but now could be collaboration oh, so, like, yeah <laughs> I love that thing. What'd you say? Compare something, not replace. Can you say that again? So we're here to enhance, to um, to help you uh, uh -huh. build your business more at a peace of mind rather than to replace oh, your right. current yes. business or passion, right? 
Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. I'm so glad it's recorded. I'm going to go back and watch this part. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I think this question goes out to Colton. Um, it's uh, from uh, Hel Helena Envision. She's in Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, how do you address the issue of partners always being late? You got partners being late? Well, part of the problem is you live in Los Angeles. That makes it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Kansas City, we don't have as many traffic issues, but. Uh. <laughs> well, there's a pure but, work ethic issue. I, yeah, I started building it in uh, Los Angeles a couple of years ago. I remember traveling there and I told my team, I was like, right, I'm going to be in Los Angeles, set me up for some appointments. And mm -hmm. I had no idea. I had no idea what I was in store for, but it'd be like three hours this way. The next meeting was three hours this way. And then oh, three hours, it was, everything was three hours away. Right. Like, Man, that's like, you know, Kansas City to St. Louis. I could have a meeting in St. Louis and back and forth and back and forth. But, um, right. definitely, you know, anytime that there's an issue, bringing it up um, right away. And I always tell everyone, be big fans in public of people and then and then talk to people in private you know um talk to people in private like have that conversation that you need to have in private but be quick to do it don't let it grow don't let it grow don't let it grow um right. and then anytime you're going to give any type of feedback um kiss kick kiss i've heard that right. from lots of different people or the hero sandwich however you want to put it but it's basically right. you know, give them something that they do really well we call it calling out what, what do they do well what's a good piece of advice to them like what's what's right. something they do well and it's much of the advice in between and then always connect advice to their goals. Um, don't okay. tell them as a person, but tell them as hey, as a partner of yours, this is how this is probably going to affect your business, which is based on your goal. You know, you tell me you want this. Um, showing up late isn't going to help you get there. So connecting it to their goal and then ending it with, man, wasn't that a great meeting? Oh, my gosh. Loved it. You did such a great job. You paid attention the whole time. You know, where to go. Right. OK. All right. Let's do a quick role play. Um, let's say I'm always late and uh, Colton, I'm, I'm, I'm in your team and uh in your inner circle and and this is a problem we can't have that have that happen yeah. you know i got stuff going on at home man and sorry i'm late again but yeah what are you gonna do the dog <laughs> you got the dog yeah you got shark you had to give shark a bath and stuff yeah so, <laughs> andrew man wasn't that a great meeting i loved our meeting tonight and again this is not happening from the front this is happening in a private side conversation but andrew yep. loved our meeting tonight um man you were on you're very attentive the entire time uh, you know, a lot of people are on their phones, but you were really attentive the whole night. Loved it. Oh, hey, I wanted to bring up, um, you know, you always you always talk about you're really wanting to this, wanting to go um, all in on this, wanting to hit director um, would be a big goal of yours. One thing yeah. that we want to bring is always a professional vibe. And when you show up late, people do notice that because you're a leader in our mm. environment, you're an influencer, and you show up late, people notice that. Um, right. Just really, really, really based on who you are, I want to make sure that you're able to show up on time, maybe aim for five minutes early. If honestly, you can show up 10, 15 minutes early so that we have time to prepare for the meeting um, and be really, really, really ready to go. Uh, that would be helpful. But man, so great. excited, so pumped. This was a great meeting. Oh man, I never That's thought of it that way. <laughs> Wonderful, smooth, Colton. Um, okay, so you know, in the future, if anybody here has any questions for us, go to bit.ly forward slash ask talk shop. Next week, we're, we're going to come back with uh, knowledge and resources. Uh, Olivia is going to head us up in that, in that uh, you know, next week. And um, let me see. Olivia, since you're heading us up next week, why don't you end us off this week with uh, something, with a question to ponder on? All right. Um, I think uh, we're still going to continue with that theme from last week as well, the focus and urgency, right? So, um, right. Let's say if your income from Market America will be capped one year from now, mm -hmm. where do you want to be financially and business wise? And what would you do daily? What Ooh. would be your priority to do list? So good. Love Something it. to think about. Okay. Wow. And take I love it. On, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time. And as you know, always a pleasure to hang out with y'all. Looking forward to our hangout next week. <laughs>